Hello everyone at Stanford High School and happy International Women's Day. My name is Emma Griffiths and I currently work as an engineer at Jaguar Land Rover in the West Midlands. Uh, in my spare time I enjoy cooking, eating, um, I enjoy exercising. I was quite sporty at school and I still, still like to um, keep that up. Um, I also love seeing friends and family and travelling so hopefully all that will get back to normal soon. Um, so I'm here today just to talk to you a little bit about my journey so far and why I think International Women's Day is important. So when I finished school, so I was at Stanford High School as well, um, so several years ago I was sat where you all are. Uh, on finishing school I went to university and I studied a science degree. Um, I ended up specialising in a subject called material science, which is cross between physics and chemistry and it also has, um, it kind of what led me on to, to working in engineering. Uh, when I finished my degree, I did an, an internship for a year where I got to work with lots of different companies within engineering. And that made me realise that that's really what I wanted to do. So I went on to um, work at Jaguar Land Rover on the graduate scheme. And I really enjoyed my, my journey there. I've been at Jaguar Land Rover now for six years. And it's been um, a really good learning experience. I've learned lots of new things and met lots of different people. So it's been really good. In my industry, so in engineering and in automotive, uh, there aren't that many women. So in the UK, only 12% of all engineers are women. But hopefully that is going to start changing. So there's a lot more women of my age that are going into engineering. And hopefully uh, lots of you sitting here today will also consider... Um, a career in science and engineering because it's a really great career. Um, I think one of the things that's really helped me perhaps be you know in a minority in the workplace is having a really strong network of friends and colleagues. So throughout my career both at school and university and now at work I think a theme um, that's really helped me is to have a really strong group of friends. Um, you know my friends that I made when I was at school at Stanford are still some of my closest friends now um, and it's great to have that really supportive network. Similarly at university um, and now at Jaguar Land Rover I've got lots of female colleagues and friends that are also engineers um, and it's great to really help support each other. So um, I would always give that as advice is um, look out for each other, support each other, celebrate each other's successes. Um, and, and as well, that, that can really help you if you're if you need some help um, or you're finding something difficult and you can turn to that support network. International Women's Day is important to me because I think it's a great showcase of what women have achieved, um, what women are achieving and what hopefully women will go on to achieve in the future. So I hope it's something that you find inspiring and I hope it's something that you or it can show you that no matter what your gender or um, your background or any other characteristic you have, um, you know, if you believe you can do it, then, then you can go on to achieve that. So in terms of advice I'd like to give you today, there are two things. Uh, so the first thing is don't limit yourself. Um, so, you know, really do believe that you can achieve it. Um, you're much more likely to achieve, achieve it if you believe that you can succeed. Um, so as, as an example, you know, people are often surprised when I tell them that I work as an engineer. And that's simply just because the stereotype is that most engineers are men. Now, to be a good engineer, uh, you need to build, you know, you need to have an interest in science. You need to be good at problem solving and you need to be able to work as a team. And there's absolutely no reason why women uh, aren't just as good, you know, at doing all those things as men. So, you know, in, in, women make just as good engineers as men. Um, so don't limit yourself by stereotypes or by what other people think. You know, if you, if you want it, then then go out and get it. Um, the second thing is to work hard and make the most of the opportunities that you have. Um, even if something doesn't go as planned or, um, you know, you have a setback, you know, try and learn from that. Um, make the most of that that opportunity and, you know, that will help you to develop and to grow for the future. Um, so I hope this was useful. Uh, so happy International Women's Day again, and I hope you stay safe and well. So hi everyone, I'm Claire Lomas. I was actually a Stanford High School girl. Um, I left in 1998, and it actually doesn't seem that long ago. Um, but in 2007, I had an accident. 
was a horse riding accident that left me paralyzed from the chest down. Um, and I was on the cross country course at an event. It was the tiniest mistake. The horse clipped his shoulder on a tree, flung me into the tree. And when I hit the ground, I knew I was paralyzed. And I never sat still for a second. To, so to be told that I'd probably have to spend the rest of my life in a wheelchair was pretty daunting. And it wasn't without some really hard times. I was a chiropractor, I'd been to university, got my degree and set up a clinic that I treated my patients on part-time at home. Um, and I'd also just reached the highest level in the sport of eventing. I was competing at Burley Horse Trials in 2006, which was my childhood dream. So things were really exciting. My goals were set high for the future. And then that was all to change. Um, but since that day that kind of shattered my life, I found new things to do and actually wouldn't change my life back now. And um, I'm a, as a career, I'm a motivational speaker and I've done a lot of fundraising. Uh, I've raised over three quarters of a million pounds now to help cure paralysis and I won't stop there um, and have lots of plans for the future. And at the moment I'm learning to fly. So I'm quite close to my first solo flight, which is very exciting. Um, I ride motorbikes, I get out on track days and got my race license a few years ago and I'd never ridden a motorbike before my accident. Um, and have two little children as well. So it certainly not stopped me doing what I wanted to do. Yeah, so um, funny enough, spinal injuries are 80% male. Um, and when I was in spinal unit, there weren't many females around at all. Um, so anyway, I didn't let that stop me getting a spinal injury. <laughs> Still went and got one. Um, and a lot of the things I actually do and have chosen to do since, so particularly the sports I do, are male-dominated sports. So riding motorbikes, I'll be out on track days. Um, I'm usually the only one in a wheelchair and often one of the only females there too. Um, and it doesn't put me off doing it. I think, well, why shouldn't we? We're no different. Once I'm on the bike, you wouldn't know I was paralyzed and you wouldn't have any kind of advantage to being a male or female mm. I just get out there and enjoy it um, and I'm in the same situation when I'm flying and learning to fly and you just don't see many females there uh, but again there's no reason why we shouldn't be doing these things and I love it I feel part of it I feel that they welcome me into their sports and um, yeah don't let things stop you whether it's a career or sport because they're male dominated there's absolutely no reason why we can't be out there um doing exactly what they're doing um i think a lot of barriers um are put there by ourselves doubting ourselves and i think to overcome them it's often your own mindset so having a positive attitude um when i had my accident two-thirds of my body suddenly didn't work but actually, I think that the biggest thing that could have held me back was if I didn't come to terms with my injury mentally, physically, I, there's so much I could still do. But if I kept thinking of all the things I couldn't do, then I wouldn't have moved forward. So I think it's the same in many areas of life um, that we often put these things that we are unable to do it or it's difficult. But you can, if you, with the right attitude and belief in yourself, you can actually do a lot more than you ever realise. So... Yeah, don't let gender stop you doing things or disability, any adversity. When, you know, we all get ups and downs in life. We're all going to face challenges. Mm -hmm. And when we do face challenges, make sure you push on through them because you can get through them um, with the right attitude. I think probably when I did the London Marathon um, and I walked in a robotic suit, it took me 17 long days. Wow. And I set off with the goal of raising 10,000 pounds and raised 220,000 um, by the time it was all over. And I think considering a lot of spinal injuries and I think with the injured soldiers now that we get that often go and do sporting things and challenges, I actually felt like being a woman was an advantage to how much I'd raised because of the median is a little bit different. And I felt that getting out there and doing it um, was actually an example to what was possible. And there's, yeah, there's no reason to feel like you can't, even though in the media, a lot of the people you were seeing were male. And um, I felt, yeah, I felt that in a way it was, it was good because it was a different story and a different aspect to help me raise money. Uh, I think International Women's Day is a great day to get everyone thinking about how we need it to be equal for women because it's a lot better than it was, but actually it's still not perfect. Um, there's a lot of people that aren't paid equally. I think the BBC actually pub uh, published a list of what people are paid and some of our 
greatest people like Claire Bolden and, and Gabby Logan and people like that weren't paid on the same scale as the, the men doing equivalent um, job roles. So there's still room for improvement. Same in women's sport. It's often not televised as much as the men doing sport and prize money. It's another area where, you know, it's probably a little bit behind. And there's absolutely no reason why it should. Uh, so a day like women, uh, International Women's Day gives us a chance to think this of areas of for improvement, but mm -hmm. also how far we've come when you look back. And I remember seeing that not that many years ago, women couldn't race on a motorbike in the Isle of Man TT, which is a worldwide famous race. One of my ultimate challenges to ride a charity lap there. I hope I'll do one day. Um, and women couldn't even go and race there. And there are now, obviously still not as many women racing bikes as men, but they are allowed. So, you know, it's not that long ago, there were so many restrictions. Um, and things have moved forward, but we can keep keep pushing forward and making that better. And all you youngsters can go on and achieve exactly what you want to do. So good luck to you all. Um, my advice to anyone that's leaving and thinking what you want to do for the rest of your life, and it's you know, a lot of decisions are made at your age, and it's not always easy. Um, well, there'll be a couple of things really. Sometimes life doesn't go how we want. We don't get the exam grades we we think we're going to get and want to get to go on, but actually. Some of these things end up putting you on a new path and you end up doing something that you actually preferred. So don't let knockbacks and setbacks actually stop you from achieving. Just find another route to take. Um, without my life changing accident, I wouldn't have done half the stuff that I'd done, even though at the time it felt devastating. And the other thing is, is things don't happen without hard work. And I love the quote, make an effort, not an excuse, because it is so easy to make an excuse um, where actually if you find a way around it, you can still get through it. So, um, yeah, make that extra bit of effort to get what you want out of life. Hi, I'm Zoe Cameron. I left Stanford High School in 2002 and I'm now an airline pilot for Virgin Atlantic, flying long haul on the Airbus A350-1000. I've also recently become a published children's book author. After leaving Stafford High School, I studied for a degree in Economics and Social Studies at the University of Manchester. And in my final year, I applied to a flying school. And in the October following graduation, I went to New Zealand to learn to fly. Arriving in New Zealand, I was the only girl out of over 30 cadet pilots. This didn't bother me. However, it turned out there was a small group of boys on the course who, when they learned there was a female cadet coming out, decided to try and intimidate me. Possibly more of a social experiment than anything else to see if a girl really could make it as a pilot and whether I could withstand their banter. As it happened, they learnt their attempts were entirely pointless. I actually didn't even realise they were trying to intimidate me. I just thought they were really terrible at banter. After a couple of weeks, they stopped and we all became friends. My strategy throughout was just to be myself, trust my instincts. I had only one career plan right from primary school and I wasn't going to get let anything stop me. In fact, whilst I was learning to fly in New Zealand, I was involved in a plane crash when the aeroplane suffered a technical failure. Myself and my instructor were really lucky to get out of it alive. And if I wasn't going to let a plane crash change my mind about becoming a pilot, I certainly wasn't about to let another person stop me. I've now been a pilot for 14 years, and during this time I've flown with less than 10 other women. So my workplace on the flight deck is well and truly male dominated. I've had a fair few sexist comments from all sorts of people, mainly from passengers though, to be honest. A few of my favourites are along the lines of, I didn't think they let women fly airliners because of their emotions. I mean, as you know, barely a day goes by where us women don't break down in pearls of tears, so this is obviously a very real hazard. I've had a few men over the years tell me they're happy to let me fly the plane, just as long as someone else parks. This is always hilarious. One lady passenger actually surprised me. She was a nervous flyer and she came into the flight deck before the flight just to try and calm her nerves a bit, which isn't unusual. She saw me sat there and said that she was now feeling really nervous because she's flown on aircraft with lady pilots twice before and both times there was terrible turbulence. Unsure about how she thought the previous female pilots had conjured up turbulence, I thought it best to show her the route weather maps which basically show the position of the jet streams, which are what often cause the turbulence, especially on an oceanic crossing. And then I reassured her that the turbulence, although uncomfortable at times, was not a threat to the flight. 
Reassured that I knew what I was doing, she went back to her seat and she was absolutely fine. On this occasion, in the interest of customer service, I chose to demonstrate my knowledge and professionalism in order to overcome her sexist attitude towards me. Some people do have these archaic ideas still. They're used to seeing men in the flight deck and it does catch some people by surprise. Until it's the norm to see men and women in the flight deck in equal measures, I suspect the comments will always be there. Over 99% of my male colleagues in the flight deck treat me exactly the same as they would treat any other pilot. They aren't bothered whether there's a man or a woman sat next to them, as long as they're a competent pilot. Regardless of whether I'm flying with one of those people, or the less than 1% who still harbour sexist feelings towards a woman being a pilot, my tactic, which has got me this far, is to be myself and be professional. I know what I'm doing. I make sure I'm up to date on the systems, the operating procedures and the route notes, and I know I'm a good pilot. And this has always been enough to win over the handful of pilots who have initially doubted me just because I'm a woman. As well as my career as a pilot, my children's book, Ada and Emily Take to the Skies, was published at the end of last year. Essentially, it's about two girls, two 10 year old girls who decide to become pilots. They build their own aeroplane and they eventually manage to fly it to London for a tour of the city from the air. Part of the reason behind writing this book is that I wanted children from an early age to know that they can be a pilot or an engineer or whatever it is that they want to be. I feel like I was lucky to have grown up knowing that I was going to be a pilot. I was helped by the fact that my dad was a pilot and so it never occurred to me that being a female would be an issue of any kind and I strongly believe that this is what helped me stay focused to eventually become a pilot and do something that I absolutely love to do for a living. International Women's Day is a really important date in the calendar. Not only does it celebrate the achievements of women who have suffered in order to bring more equality, but it also calls for a more rapid approach to bringing full equality. I'll sign off now. If I could offer just one piece of advice, it would be to be yourself and if you have a dream, then do whatever you can to chase it because doing a job you love is seriously incredible and 100% worth making happy. Thank you.